you always tell me about Bob McKittrick as sort of like the unsung hero of the 49ers dynasty. He wasn't a coordinator, but he was such an he was the most important position coach on the offensive line that he was utterly indispensable to the 49ers. And it seems like maybe the new Bob McKittrick on this team would be the defensive line coach, Chris Kacerik. You've seen him. You're intrigued by him. Yes. Uh, Iggy and I talk about the show in the morning before we see you guys. And we were trying to figure out our topics. And I, I had read an article by Eric Branch this morning in the Chronicle, an article I liked a lot. And Eric talked a lot about Chris Kacerik. And I realized... I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about him. Of course, I don't go down there anymore. I've never met him. So I asked Iggy, do you respect him as a coach? Yes. And what's he like as a guy? And I asked Iggy, does he strike you as the Bob McKittrick, the unsung hero? And he said, yes. So I asked Iggy if maybe he could say, what is good about Kosirik as a coach? And what is he like as a guy? So, I mean, it's the off season. So we can do sort of in, in depth uh, personal analysis. Well, the Niners want to build to their defense, and they specifically want to build through their defensive line. So he's the position coach that's been entrusted with the most important position to the coaches. And he consistently makes it the engine of the team. Like without that defensive line being good against the run in the pass, the defense wouldn't be what it is. The team wouldn't be what it is. So he uses like a kind of a gimmicky front. It's called a wide nine. He takes four guys and moves them way far apart. And the idea is we're coming to sack the quarterback. We don't care what you're doing, running, whatever. Uh, we're going to sack the quarterback, and you're welcome to run the ball as much as you. We got really good linebackers too. And he, in the past, it, it, teams haven't had success with it because you're so vulnerable against the run, but the Niners have been dominant with it against the run and pass, and it's their identity of their team. Like He, he really is the identity of their team. And uh, I, I think when they brought in Steve Wilkes, they were also interviewing Vic Fangio, and I think the, I, the thing was, you got to work with Kacerik. You have to work with him, and Fangio runs sort of a 3-4. It doesn't really fit the wide nine, and I don't think he wanted to make concessions for Kacerik's sake, state, uh, sake, so he's gone, and Wilkes is here, and, and with a compromise, work with Kacerik. And you know what? He's a great D-line coach, so it's probably not that bad of a compromise to make. Okay. Have you ever met him? Yes. Under what circumstances? Once a year, the Niners bring out their position coaches to talk to the media. Once or twice a year. It's usually during training camp. So I like to go over and him and talk and talk to him because he's very candid about all the players he coaches, and he'll talk about himself. He's plain spoken. He's not one of these guys who is thinking three steps ahead, like, what should I not say? Or what's a good answer? He's just plain spoken. And that's a good place to start with a football coach or player. Iggy, what does he look like? He's tall. He looks like he used to be a D end. He looks like a defensive end. And uh, he's not ambitious in the sense where he's not trying to become a defensive coordinator or head coach. He's not being political. He's the best D line coach. He makes a bunch of money. He's happy with his life. He wants to just keep doing what he's doing. And what, one thing he's really good at is like just little tiny details, not the big picture. Like he gets defensive linemen to react quicker to the snap. That's a big thing with him. It's like, you'll be better if you just react quicker to the snap. So you see him in practice. He's just, he gets his face. D lineman is in a three-point stance, right? And their face is almost on the ground, right? When they're lined up. Kacera gets his face right next to him. And when the ball gets snapped, he just yells like, ah! Ah! like over and over and over again. Like that, he's, he's great at that. He gets people to, you know, these athletes to be their most athletic selves. But that's, I mean, he's I not like talking poetry there. He's just yelling. It's very interesting. I love it. And now I want to come back to McKittrick. McKittrick had very good offensive lines, but not necessarily the highest draft choices. Um, Kosirik does have high draft choices, and he does have elite players, but not all of them. No. Some of them are guys that he's developed. So in that regard, he's like McKittrick too, in that yeah. he can take, let's say, a C-plus, B-minus player and elevate him to be really good. And he's done it again and again and again. He has, you can absolutely. name some of the names, right? Yeah, I mean, Arden Key, Charles Amenehue, Samson Ebukam, Eric Armstead. Eric Armstead was not having much of a career until Chris Kassarek came over here. Now Eric Armstead's got generational wealth and he's one of the better impact players at his position in the league when healthy. That's another one. 
Um, now, he couldn't do it with Javon Kinlaw, but that wasn't his fault. Kinlaw had an injury. And I think that's why they drafted Kinlaw. They're like, well, give him to Chris Kacarek. He'll be fine. It just didn't work out because of injuries, but that's not Kacarek. That's not out of his control. And it's out of uh, Kinlaw's control, too. It's out of Kinlaw's hard. control, too. Yeah, absolutely. He did. I have one other thing I want. I don't know if I've ever told you. You know that uh, McKittrick was so important to those Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. McKittrick and Bill Walsh didn't like each other. I would even go so far as to say they disliked each other. They, uh, Bill was very um, not direct. He was mm-hmm. always talking in code. Mm-hmm. And um, McKittrick was the most blunt person. So, mm-hmm. for example... Bill told me, and it's in a book I wrote, that this is a paraphrase because I haven't read the book in like decades. Um, Bob thinks that just being honest, saying whatever he wants to say is good. Sometimes you need to um, rein yourself in to restrain yourself. And Bob doesn't know how to do that. In other words, Bob used to piss Bill off because he he didn't agree with him sometimes. He had his own opinion or he disagreed with him. He would say it. And he would say it, and Bill didn't like it. Um, now, maybe Bob did need to work on his social technique. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't in the coaches' meetings. But that's how Bill perceived him. I'm going to tell you what McKittrick said about Bill. Sometimes when a practice was over, they'd all run off the field. And McKittrick would say to some of the coaches, look, he runs like a, a, like a girl. Now, it's fine to run like a girl. I'm not putting down anybody. There's a lot of girls when I was a runner who could kick my ass. All I'm yeah. saying is what McKittrick said. And wow. what he meant was he's not quite masculine. He's not right? as tough. Yeah, like like he, he's a football coach, but I'm a football coach. And this is, yeah. And this I'm, guy an is, yeah. I'm, I'm an ex-Marine. I'm an ex-Marine. And, and what I think was funny, her- was funny is like most guys wouldn't have I mean, he must have known he was so essential to bill walsh that he could disagree with him he could make fun of him he could talk behind his back like, what's he gonna do he, his whole operation would fall apart without me so go ahead right. bill right he was a lifer there and bill he probably was. resented that he couldn't do it without him absolutely and it, a couple of other things the, the bill was the passing game the running game was bob mm-hmm. and when they would go and i've said this before you know they have that blackboard grease board where they where they diagram plays and that, that's what they're doing all day long they're diagramming plays mm-hmm. in front of the team certainly bill would get up the only other offensive coach allowed to get up before the team was mckittrick not holmgren wow. not anybody else mckittrick wow not holmgren not weish just mckittrick that's crazy yep. well I don't know that Chris Kacarek has that type of voice in, in, in the meeting room because D-line is different than O-line, I, but he is that important. I bet you he makes a lot of money. I bet you he makes millions of dollars a year to, to, to yell in defensive line's face, faces. That story you told, Iggy, about him yelling when the ball is snapped Every day. is so telling. And, yeah. it, and he's right down there with them. And a player appreciates that, right? Yes, absolutely. He's down and yes. dirty like us. Absolutely. Every single rep. And the same intensity for every single player. Nick Bosa or the last guy. And I think that's what people respect about him. Like He's not just giving his... He can develop D-linemen, but he's not just spending all his energy on the important ones. He gives an equal amount of that incredible intense energy to every single defense alignment on the team. And he gets guys paid. He, he, he creates careers for players who are either nobodies or busts. I love it. So a lot of people I'm, really, really appreciate him. I'm glad we did that. And, you know, maybe yeah. next week, if there's not a lot going on, we'll focus on another coach. Their offensive line coach is really interesting, too. We could talk about him, Chris Forrest. I would love it. Yeah. Tyler says, I was in the Army. I agree completely. The best leaders show they are great followers. Kyle never was a great follower, in my opinion. The worst leaders do not listen as well. That is all, Kyle. Interesting. It's interesting. The Niners have this football savant who grew up around the sport, probably knew X's and O's before he knew grammar. But he's so not a leader. And I don't think you can learn those traits at 44 years old. Frankie says, offensive head coaches who win in the NFL are few and the fewer who have won on multiple teams. We are trading elite leadership for an O scheme. What wins in the NFL these days, top-notch offenses with great quarterbacks. Yeah, not great schemes. I mean, I I, I know Andy Reid has a dazzling scheme. Philly does not. Philly's a very simple offense, but... 
they have a quarterback and offensive line and some skill. And look at them. They put up 35 in the play in this in the Super Bowl. The Niners put up 20 with that scheme. Scheme. That's the word of the day, Dad. Our show's over. I thought it was a good one. I, I, I it's the high point of my week, guy. Me too. Me too, Dad. Uh, so why don't we? Why don't I give you a call and we'll talk about but, it? Iggy, remember, I only got one phone number now. I, I oh! cut out. So you have That's to call amazing. me on. Uh, yeah, it's an I'm end trying, of an era. Well, I want to tell you what happened, guys. I'm. Tr I I got my uh, bill for you know the internet and the. the Wi-Fi and the TV. It was like three hundred and five dollars, and I didn't even watch that much TV. So I it's called true. them up, and I, I got a significant reductions. And one of them was I. I had two landlines and one um, cell phone. We don't get that good cell phone up here in the hills, but I got rid of one landline, and that saved me some money. So you'll call on the main number, okay? Real quick before we go, Josh Knudsen, who I know very well, has been putting in a bunch of. Uh, um, Super, not super chats, but chats asking if you watch South Park. <laughs> me? Yeah, you. No, but you took me to see the South Park movie when I was in fifth grade. And you instantly regretted it. Remember that? I, I Mark Haight and I took you, right? I was it, like was, eleven. What, was that the time we were in San Francisco and you ran up on the stage of the movie theater? No, you, that was when we were. That I was to my. I was not eleven. I was like three. We were watching uh, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Ninja. I was we, we, Ninja Turtles. We took him to San Francisco, my friend Mark and I, and all of a sudden, Iggy wasn't in the auditorium next to us, and Mark said, look at him. And he was on the stage, and I mean, the movie was going on. And do you remember doing that? No. I think I was three. I got a little excited. I started. Was I doing karate on the stage? <laughs> yes. I was doing karate on the stage. How could I not? I mean, it was, <laughs> it was a very exciting movie, Ninja Turtles. Sorry. <laughs> so I had you to take me out, right? I didn't get to make it to the end of the movie. <laughs> I got ejected <laughs> and arrested. Josh, Wy Josh Wyatt says, how would Walsh handle Marate essentially being a shadow GM? If we got rid of Kyle, would a great leader ever put up with the ownership? You know, that's interesting. I think probably Bill and Parag did overlap for a few years on the 49ers. I, I think there's probably an answer out there. Yeah, I'm thinking I Bill wouldn't want Parag to tell him who to take or who to pay. Uh, I, I would think that Parag has a big ego, but it's it, it's it's a shrimp compared to Bill's. I think Bill would have found a way to neutralize Parag. I would think so. Um, Plea Montaigne, who wrote into you that beautiful uh, essay about Kyle's leadership, says, thought of Kyle's autobio title inspired from yesterday's show with Ryan. Ego and hubris is already taken. The NFL's Moses, my failure to reach the Holy Land. Is there a Joshua on staff? <laughs> I always felt that Moses got a raw deal. He did. He got a Moses. It, talk about a tragic hero. And there's yeah. no real reason. I mean, this, this, there's no real reason God wouldn't let him in. That's what I, I always go back to the treatment of Moses and David. Like, God loved David, who was, what? I mean, he murdered Bathsheba's husband, right? Or whatever that guy. Yeah, he put it, he in, essentially, yeah. I mean, he was a hero as a young man, but he did awful things. And God was like, that's my guy. That's my guy, <laughs> King David. Moses, like, also was a freaking hero and, like, lost his temper at 80 years old at the end of a very, very long journey. And God, God was like, how dare you freaking talk to me like that? <laughs> I don't get that. I don't no, understand I don't that. Either. I think Moses was a better guy than David. I do. I think so. He never stole anyone else's wife and had the guy killed in battle. Like, that was harsh. Yeah, he put him What about that front guy? Line? Front yeah. line. How does your dad see Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia? I'm sure you're not going to watch that boxing match. Have you? Is you it boxing who they are? or is it it's you, boxing? You, you have, you well, know, it's boxing fan wrote it in. So, uh, um, I'm so sorry, guys. You know, uh, my boxing days are, are over. I don't understand the sport anymore. Jay Jackson says David killed a guy to sleep with his wife, and then Jay Jackson says David was cold. David was cold. David was cold. David was cold. Uh, <laughs> Ramillion Sports Report says, God bless Papa Cohn. Detroit win the Super Bowl for the Niners. I will say that Detroit is the next team that's improving. They uh, went crazy in free agency this year. Can I say something? Sure. I love that comment. If Detroit wins a Super Bowl before Kyle, they have to fire Kyle. Have to! Have to. There should be a clause in his contract. <laughs> Look, we, you, we, you can have this job for life, but if Detroit ever wins a Super Bowl, you're fired immediately. Detroit. I have to say...